Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting our lesson today from our Faith Pathway Bible Study book. Uh, this is Lesson 6 for January the 9th, 2022. We're still in Unit 2 entitled The Source of Justice. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Improbable Hope. Our devotion reading is taken from uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, verses 10 through 14. And our background scripture is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. And we'll be studying today in our printed text from the book of Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through 20. Our key verse reads, God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. And that's taken from Genesis chapter 21. Uh, verses 17 uh, and 18 from the NIV translation. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled A Mother's Demand. Our second outline is entitled A Father's Dilemma. And the third outline is entitled An Unlikely Deliverance. And as always we thank and praise God for just another day uh, that the Lord has kept us. We thank God for um, this new year. Happy New Year to all of the listeners today and certainly those of uh, Pleasant Green uh, and our partners and so we thank and praise God for this uh, I believe is a very timely lesson uh, for us today as our focus uh, continues to be on on our families and the well-being of our families and the legacies of our families uh, this lesson will serve to suit uh, all of those concerns. Uh, so we encourage you now to get your Bible and <clears throat> be prepared to uh, take some notes and some scripture references that we're going to share with you today. Uh, we want to begin with our biblical context for this lesson. Abraham's wait for an heir led to uh, wrong decisions and set the stage for ongoing conflict within his family. Uh, at the insistence of Sarah, he fathered a child by Hagar, Sarah's Egyptian maidservant. You will see that in Genesis chapter uh, 16. Hagar's pregnancy became a thorn of contention between uh, his two wives and finally Hagar ran away. Uh, during her departure, Hagar's departure, God instructed her to return and submit to Sarah. Hagar obeyed and later gave birth to a son, Ishmael. Approximately 13 years later, God appeared to Abraham and uh, reaffirmed his promise that Sarah would have an heir. Uh, we can see reference in Genesis chapter 17 as well as Genesis chapter 18. But God remembered his promise and Sarah conceived and gave birth to Isaac. Uh, that's in our lesson text today from Genesis chapter 21 verses 1 through 8. However, because of Ishmael's playful mocking of his young brother Isaac, Sarah insisted that Abraham send him and his mother away. And again, um, that comes from our uh, printed text today. Uh, absent of verse 21 but it is in uh, Genesis chapter uh, 21 uh, verses 8 through 21 and so I will uh, share with you um, these lesson aims today what we want to uh, try to focus on as we look at this lesson uh, the first aim is to discover how God was with Hagar and Ishmael Secondly, to believe that God is at work even in the midst of hopeless situations. And then thirdly, to trust in God's presence and provision even when experiencing injustice. So we want to discover uh, how God is uh, in the midst 
certainly Hagar and Ishmael, but certainly we want to discover God in the midst of our lives and our uh, in the events of our lives. Uh, we want to believe uh, always uh, that God is at uh, work, uh, no matter what our situations may be. And then, lastly, uh, probably one of the most challenging things for any believer is to trust. To trust in God's presence and provision even when things are not going well, even when there seems to be no answer. Uh, I should tell you today this lesson um, speaks to me very personally. Um, but I want to uh, get into these outlines. Uh, you will need, uh, as a part of your biblical reference, you will need uh, Genesis chapter 15 and you will also need Genesis chapter uh, 16 to really put this lesson into context there was absolutely nothing wrong with uh, Abram at the time in Genesis chapter 15 being concerned about his legacy uh, being concerned about who would continue his legacy I think that is admirable for him uh, to be thinking ahead, um, notwithstanding uh, that of his present situation, but that he had to at some point leave uh, his temporal life. At some point he would have to lay down his days. Uh, and he was concerned uh, about uh, carrying or having a child to carry on his legacy and he took that matter if you uh, are examining uh, Genesis chapter 15 he uh, Abram uh, uh, questioned God about that particular matter and, and, and if you look at Genesis chapter 15 God answered him right God gave him a favorable response. God told him that what he was projecting uh, uh, was wrong. That would not be the case. Uh, uh, that would not be uh, uh, the outcome of his days. Uh, that he would have a servant to continue his legacy as opposed to having a child uh, from his direct uh, 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 lineage, if you will, from his own body. Uh, but something happened in that uh, in that exchange after that exchange between he and God so we can see right away that uh, Abram had discovered something in the 15th chapter and at least initially it appears that he believed what God says uh, about his situation uh, uh, but trusting in God to do that and I like this topic talking about improbable hope or having a hope uh, or probability too low right too low to inspire belief uh, by definition uh, Abram's hope was too low and it did not inspire a sustained belief uh, and we know that from the 16th chapter of the book of Genesis because a plan was afoot uh, so I want to lay this foundation so as we get into uh, this lesson outline over in the 21st chapter of Genesis because of the unsustained uh, hope uh, or the uh, the the probability of, 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 of hope being too low, uh, it didn't sustain Abram uh, at that time. So now we pick the lesson text up in Genesis chapter 21 that because of uh, Sarah and Abram's decision to get ahead of God, if you will, and to uh, offer a quick fix or an alternative to their solution conflict has entered into both of their lives um, it has entered into the entire 
uh, family or the dysfunction of this arrangement. Uh, if you want to press at a family definition, uh, a conflict is afoot in this family, this made family, this man-made family um, that Abram and Sarah initiated. Keep those things in mind. Um, but just before we begin, I want to venture into Genesis chapter 21. Uh, this is not a part of the printed text, but it is a great prelude into where we are going today. And I want you to travel there with me, Genesis chapter 21. And I want to look at verse uh, 1 and 2, because this is where... Uh, uh, I believe we need to be. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1, uh, says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. Watch this, church. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. So the problem uh, of this situation uh, behind the scenes was it was an age factor with Abram. It was an age factor that he, uh, 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 or time issue, if you will. And if I can summarize uh, perhaps what Abram had on his mind, if I can just insert my own belief about his situation he believed that he was running out of time right but God had said he would do something at a different time and this is where uh, uh, many times when we make decisions time is a factor for us we are considering time whether we speak to it or not something is not happening fast enough for us, right? God is not moving fast enough. And I believe this happened to uh, Abram and Sarah. Time was running out. But God had made a promise that was different from their time zone or from their perspective of time. But nevertheless, God said that he would do it, right? So now we're really getting it, pulling back the curtains of our trusting him and discovering him and believing in him. And I believe in the course of time, Abram's time and uh, uh, Sarah's timetable and God's timetable, this is where the fight of faith took place. We're going to talk about that as we go along. So let's just move right into our first outline. A mother's demand. This is taken from Genesis chapter 21 verses 8 through 10. I want to read this from the NIV translation. The Bible says the child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. Verse 9, but Sarah saw the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham, was mocking. Verse 10, and she said, she being Sarah, said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. So let's unpack this, right? Let's unpack now that we have a, 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 an excellent foundation of what happened. Now we get into the fact that uh, uh, now conflict is in that decision that these two people made. Uh, we don't get where uh, Hagar consented uh, to this arrangement. Nevertheless, she went along with it to go into uh, Abram and to father this child, to bring this child in as 
Abram's uh, 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 heir uh, uh, to obtain an inheritance but God didn't stop that decision God didn't stop Abram's and Sarah's decision he didn't get involved right so they have this child Hagar has this child Ishmael Sarah has her child as God has said as we read to you and now there is conflict between these two children these two boys and it it takes place to the uh, to the extent that Sarah is now changed her mind about the decision that she made I want you to walk with me church because when we decide or we overstep uh, uh, the plan of God and then things don't work out we have to change right we have to go back uh, or try to undo the decision but we can't put uh, this boy Ishmael back into the womb we can't put Isaac back into the womb of Sarah these two decisions have surfaced together and there is conflict between these decisions right and so we look here at some of the commentary about the conflict within families can cause hurt rivalry separation and even the loss of lives right people will kill as a result of conflict one of the things that uh, I want to share with us today and I'm glad the Holy Spirit is just allowing me to just labor with you for a minute as I share this is uh, somewhat personal uh, for me um, but there has to be uh, somewhere in our thinking that when we make decisions perhaps God knows more than we do let's just lay that foundation we have to consider the fact that God knows more than we do and so I believe when God talked to Abram in the 15th chapter about what his desires were and what he would do about that that he would indeed satisfy uh, 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 Abram's uh, request or concern about having a child God was able to say that to him in the uh, 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 within the old age of this man that you won't be my promises uh, 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 the promises of God as he unveils it to Abram in the 15th chapter your age won't be a factor right <laughs> your condition won't be a factor when I tell you I'm going to do something I don't need your age to dictate to me you can just understand where I'm going with this I don't need your situation to be better before I make a promise to you. I hope this makes sense to you today, church. I don't need you to be out of the situation before I promise to deliver you out of the situation. I don't need the circumstances to suit me before I do something because God is in control of all of the situation at every stage of our lives at every age maybe you're young maybe you're old maybe perhaps you are disabled maybe you need a healing maybe you are sick and God will speak to you in that situation uh, uh, because he doesn't need the situation to be better for him to work but we do have to believe him when he speaks to us in that particular condition I'm well into talking to me now church we don't need to be well before God uh, uh, to say to us that we will be well 
that you will be healed right when God speaks and gives an answer he has already considered your circumstance my circumstance Abram's circumstance Sarah's circumstance but what what is unique about these two individuals and, and both of them Abram and Sarah at the time when God spoke to them they both laughed as though God was joking with them about what he was going to do they didn't believe they had improbable hope it was too low at the time they didn't think but both of them laughed right you'll see that in Genesis chapter 17 verse 17 and Genesis chapter 18 verse 12 can you imagine laughing at God when he speaks to you discounting him he is not a man that he should lie right but we go on to see that within Abraham's family conflict became the norm instead of the ex the exception watch this because of decisions made outside of God's will we don't talk a lot about God's will um, we should right God has a sovereign will I believe right he desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth right we see that in Paul's writing to Timothy but God also has a permissive will in other words he allows us to make decisions and that's what these two individuals did so it was not this was not God's arrangement God got in this situation uh, and quite frankly he was never out of this situation because he knows our hearts he knows what we're going to do even though he said something to us right but the decision to use Hagar as a surrogate wife to set in motion a pattern of conflict that became a recurring watch this church a recurring generational setback really if I make a decision if I make a decision ahead of God I can create a generational problem in my family absolutely absolutely that's what the text is telling us today it became that it wasn't that but because of what we do and what we decide to to do of and uh, 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 above and over what God has told us to do and let me just tell you a little bit about uh, uh, God's will in, 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 in terms of us helping or to help you understand and to help me understand uh, uh, how to determine God's will and when we're going to make decisions God has given us enough in his word to discover his character right we will always know uh, if the things that we do are of God based on the character of that decision right and we will also know uh, 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 concerning the decisions that we make uh, that we can trace that to truth right how much how many biblical decisions do we make versus carnal decisions fleshly decisions do we make biblical decisions something that is found in the Word of God and I mean putting it in context not just because you quote something and you do something but you understand the the context of that quote and and that informs the decision that 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 we make I'm, I'm trying to help somebody today but Isaac's eventual birth was a source of joy for Abraham and Sarah we see that in Genesis 21 1 through 7 but on the day of Isaac's weaning Abraham had made a grand celebration to commemorate the occasion right and then the conflict between Sarah and Hagar escalated when Sarah observed Ishmael's mocking and ridiculing Isaac we don't know what that conversation was what that uh, uh, mocking was all about but it, but but you can imagine with uh, with two boys I remember uh, having you know my brothers we had conflict when we were children you know it happens right 
uh, particularly when we young, when we're young, we have uh, we mock one another, we talk about one another, we play the dozens. You all know all about that kind of stuff, and and it sometimes uh, we kick it. That's what we used to call it years ago. We start kicking it amongst one another, and sometimes things get out of hand. But Sarah demanded that Abraham send Hagar and Ishmael away. So instead of seeking God's help, right, and, and this is key, instead of seeking God's help to resolve this conflict, again, Sarah took matters into her, into her own hands just as she had done more than uh, a decade earlier. <clears throat> so at some point, um, this should help us to understand, you know, it doesn't matter if things go awry, and I don't want to discourage us that, uh, uh, you know, we are going to have to make decisions, and all of those decisions will not be good, right? That's just a part of life. Uh, we don't always get it right the first time, and that's okay, right? Uh, and, and many times we suffer for those decisions, duly suffer for those decisions. Uh, 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 but this should lead us to a repentant life. This should lead us to asking the Lord, even in that chaotic situation. Uh, it's nothing uncommon to say to God because he's God, right? We don't need to treat God as though we need to be some type of individual that don't make mistakes. We do. Our decisions cost us, and they cost us gener generationally. They cost us a, 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 a great harm, right? Uh, but when do we ask God to help us? When do we put in that 911 to God and say, okay, God, I, I, I've messed up, if I can say it that way. I messed up, God, right? I didn't do this right. I didn't. I didn't consult you as I should have. I'm. I'm just trying to be real with you today, Church. I'm. I'm not talking to the super Christians who don't make mistakes. I'm. I'm. I'm talking to those who, are in the course of life, decide to do things above uh, and beyond what God has instructed us to do, even through what our knowledge is about the Word of God. I. I just want to talk to you today about this. Uh, and I hope this lesson reveals some patterns of, of, of human nature uh, as we go back to Genesis. This is a pattern uh, uh, for these two individuals, even in their uh, old age. And after God has uh, uh, fulfilled uh, his promises, uh, they haven't learned anything. Right? That's unfortunate that they haven't learned to say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, I need some help here. But let's move on. Sarah failed to recognize that the same God who allowed the situation to occur was the same God who could give guidance in resolving it. Watch this. Equitably. Right? Justly. Equitably and justly. What's fair? How do we do the right thing after we've done the wrong thing? How do we make amends when we've made a mess of our lives? How do we go to God with clean hands, right? How do we go to God with open hands? How do we go to God with, with a conscience that says, look, you know, God, I, hey, I didn't do it right. We need to treat God as God and go to God as children, right? Not as adults, not in some kind of intellect or in some type of... Uh, who you think you are but we need to go to God as humble as we know how question what could this family have done to resolve this conflict with equitable justice that's a good question I want to give you Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 Romans chapter 7 verse 20 Psalm 4 verse 4 Romans chapter 7 verse 13 Proverbs uh, chapter 28 verse 13 and then Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 just to put you on a path if you will to address um, uh, this concern right but whenever there is the absence right there's an absence of God means that we have strayed 
too far from God whenever there's an absence. Second outline, a father's dilemma, again from the NIV translation, the matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Verse 13. I will make the son, watch this church, of the slave into a nation also because he is your offspring. So we were talking about resolving this situation equitably and justly. God's not going to kill Ishmael. He's going to bless him. This is his way of correcting the mistake or if you will or the decision uh, that these two individuals made to bring this boy uh, 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 into the world Ishmael and Isaac that God is saying I'm going to do something with both of them right I'm, I'm going to be fair right about this thing and that don't you love that about God he, he, he wakes up the unjust as well as the just he makes his reign to shine on the evil as well as the good but moving on verse 14 early the next morning Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar and set them on their shoulders on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy so now they have gone along with this thing to get rid of Hagar and Ishmael to resolve this conflict thank God that God said something right about this situation but the question is why is God usually the last source that believers seek for solutions to conflict, right? I want to give you Deuteronomy chapter 32. I want you to read all of that Song of Moses at your leisure. And I want you to hang out in verse 36 when you get over there, just to kind of settle that question. Uh, sometimes, uh, the older generation would say to the younger generation, certainly when I was growing up, they would say, son, you're going to have to run your row out, right? And I took that to mean that, you know, I had to exhaust everything that, that they knew you were going to end up coming back to the instruction that they gave. But since we were headstrong, right, then the older people would say, you know, you're going to run your row out. And, uh, and and that's what happens in life uh, and that's why God is usually the last source because we need to exhaust all of our intentions you know of fixing it you know I need to get this all out of me I want to do it uh, 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 my way I, I think it was uh, sort of interesting that the, this lesson um, in the introduction talked about Frank, Frank Sinatra and his song entitled I did it my way and that's what we do we like to do things our way and we don't need God as long as we're doing it our way but when we run our row out then we call on God that's not a bad thing but we encourage all of us today to 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 walk in step with the Holy Spirit right to follow the dictation of the Holy Spirit right but our last outline, an unlikely deliverance, this is taken from Genesis chapter 21, verse 14b to uh, verse 20. And the Bible says, she went on her way, she being Hagar, and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. I want you to underline desert. Just hang out there for a minute. Uh, Verse 15, when the water in the skin was gone. I want you to underline that if you can. When it was gone, right? No more provision. She put the boy uh, Ishmael under one of the bushes. Verse 16, she went off and sat down about a bow shot away. And she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. If you can uh, underline in your Bible or just make note of death, right? 
right? A desert, right? No water and death, right? And as she sat there, she began to sob. Verse 17, God heard the boy crying and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Verse 18, Lift up the boy. Or lift the boy up and take him by the hand for I will make him into a great nation. Verse 19, Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Watch this in verse 20. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. When God, this is the, the essential part of this lesson. No matter what has happened in your life, right? I'm not minimizing what it is. I'm not criticizing you for the decision that you made, that I made, that was ahead of God, if you will. Uh, we did do it our way. Let's just own that, right? We did it the way we wanted to do it. It didn't work out. But I want us to pay attention to this text, to this particular passage here, because this boy and this woman represents a decision, right? It doesn't just affect Abram, or Abraham, and Sarah. That decision affected Hagar's life. She was a servant. Now she's sitting in a desert. She had provisions under the uh, 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 the umbrella of of, of uh, Abraham's uh, uh, household, if you will. But now she's in a desert. So that decision and this boy has to now travel, right? And now they're in a place where uh, that's dry. There's no water. She believes that her son is going to die. Imagine that for a mother. Imagine the reflection that she's having about right about now in the desert. But God is talking to her. That's what I said to you earlier. Your situation, do uh, they, they do not have to improve to some personal degree of perfection before God can act. He is in the desert. God is in the desert. God is in the midst of this lack of provision. And God is presiding over life as well as death. It doesn't matter what your circumstance may be still talking to me church God talked to this woman he asked her what was the matter he told her don't be afraid he said he heard I mean he's arming her with hope that's not improbable that is now elevated to inspire her to discover God in this situation to believe God in this situation and to trust God in this situation. She has no other options. She is at the end of her rope. She has run her row out. She has nothing left. Death is imminent. Not just for the boy. But for her. Right? So these two individuals mother and child she says I'm going to put this boy over here because and under the bushes because I don't want to see what's going to happen to him because I can't do anything it is completely out of my control and that's where we learn to trust God we cannot be frankly in control and sufficiently trust God because we don't need to right but it's a very unique place to be and perhaps you are in that place today where you like Hagar have lost your way you have become exhausted by you know when we make decisions 
and they don't work out. They exhaust us. Take your breath away. It's like a gut shot, if you will, if I can paraphrase that way. So after the supply of water is gone, when you don't have any other decisions to make, and you're exhausted from doing it your way, you can do that, but it'll wear you out. Right? And you get tired of you. And you get sick of you. And you get sick of what you do and how you do. And then there is nothing left but death. Hagar has embraced death. I just want to stop right here. Because we need to pray, right? We need to pray. I thank God for this lesson because it speaks to me. And I thank God that I have a mirror. I don't try to present a mirror to anyone without looking in it myself. All right? But I want to pray for our mindset. I want to pray for our overthinking I want to pray for the solutions that we think we have and we're in a place in our culture in our country now we are running out of answers and to many extent we have run out of answers now we're going to have to look to the hills from whence cometh our help There's something in the hills. There's something above us that we need to reach for. We need to look now, as the psalmist said, to the hills (laughs) from whence cometh my help. Psalmist goes on to say, all of my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. There is no other help that I know. And if you were to withdraw yourself from us, we don't have any place else to go. Father, and as this lesson has uncovered human nature, we can easily remove the names of Abraham and Sarah and put our names in their place. Because they are gone and we are here, we remain to make decisions about our lives. We're here deciding all sorts of things. We are entering into caves of decisions, darkness of decisions, consequences for decisions. But I thank you, God, that you are in the cave of our decision. You have not left us. You preside over the cave of our understanding and the frailty of our thinking and the thoughts that that we have are ever present before you. And I would just pray and ask you to have mercy. And Father, forgive us of the decisions that we have made that we didn't even ask you about. I'm still talking about me. As I speak to and pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive us for the decisions that we have made that had nothing to do with you. Whatever our motives were, forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us as only you can. Give us, as the book of Philippians will say, let that same mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. We need his mind today. We need a mind of Christ today. To ask you, Father, what should we do? To ask you, Father, how can I go? To to ask you, Father, how can I escape the decision that I made? We need you to cover us today. Our decisions can be embarrassing for us. Humiliate us cause us to even to become depressed about that decision because we have brought oppression into our lives 
But you are the God that lifts us up out of the valley. You are the God that raises us up to a place where you desire us to be. So we come humbly today with bowed heads and humble hearts, a heart full of sincere thanks and gratitude that we have a God that understands that we make mistakes, that we don't ask you, but you are there to cover us. And we just thank you for saving us today. We made a lot of decisions in sin. And by right, we should be dead and gone. But by the grace of God, we have come all this way. I thank you for what this lesson has uncovered. We don't talk about these two individuals or none of these family members as though their nature does not exist in us. To God be the glory for all that he has done and for the benefits that he have bestowed upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Saints, I hope you will study this, look at this, and see yourself and ask God to help you make the decisions that are both equitable, that are just, and that are pleasing in his sight. Until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.